What is up, people? Today, I needed mm, a fly by the seat of your pants adventure. And so, uh, here we are in the Wichita Mountains of Southwest Oklahoma. As you can probably hear, it is incredibly windy today. But it is also incredibly beautiful out here. It's quite desolate, as it were, um, in a really, really ancient mountain range right here in southwest Oklahoma. So anyway, our two goals for today are live by the seat of our pants and explore this vast wilderness, and two, don't get bitten by rattlesnakes. I am given to understand a little bit of a problem with those around here. So anyway, let's get started. This trail is Sharon's Garden, um, Post Oak Lake. Hmm, something's joined me alongside the trail. Um, Spanish Treasure Cave is back behind me just a little bit. Um, Spe Treasure Lake is also right behind me next to Post Oak Lake. Like, there's a great, great, incredibly fascinating history of the Spanish in this area. Um, and treasure stories abound. They're a lot of fun. But regardless of the stories, this in and of itself, just look at those mountains. It's totally worth the trip up here to hike. This is like a day trip from probably Dallas. Um, it's just outside of Lawton, Oklahoma. Um, it's just, a, you know, probably a day trip from Dallas for me. I came from Fort Smith, Arkansas, like basically anywhere within a four or five hour drive. It's a great little day trip and there's a vast amount of wilderness to explore. There's a couple of great trails like this one, um, the Sharon's Garden Trail or Sharon's, whichever way you pronounce it. All right, so let's talk about real quick as I show you some of these lovely views and try not to break a hip. Um, you, I highly recommend using GPS or using like all trails, which I'm using today and, and getting the pro subscription or whatever so you can download the data and use it offline. Because this hike in particular is not even remotely marked on maps or uh, it's not remotely um, marked on trail and it's a spider web y'all of trails that branch off through here and i literally like that last clip you saw me talking to you i was on the wrong trail it's the easily the most obvious trail that takes off into the canyon it's taking me directly away from the trail i'm trying to hike um yeah i just got through talking to two different groups of wayward souls who were lost as i am we're not lost we have gps but we're nowhere near the track that downloaded from all trails. Whoever did that, like bushwhacked across some hell over there and I don't know why they did that. But just download a GPS, guys. Just download something. Unmarked, it's a wilderness area, um, area truly. So anyway, can y'all see that? I can't zoom in any closer. That is two bison right there, just chilling. able to get a little bit closer at which point he stood up and turned to face me um, I'm like a hundred yards away zoomed in as close as I can be but I am going to let them be to do their little Tatonka thing in their natural environment here and leave them the hell alone it's really really awesome though is it not it's just absolutely it's so amazing lucky we even have any left this is truly beautiful and that would be a dead armadillo sexy yeah look at this that's about a little bit of a taste of the desert southwest right here in the southern plains huh all right finally found my way back onto the all trails trail whatever that was um the history in these mountains is many and varied, but one of the most fascinating histories is that this is that of the cave with the iron door. I grew up on this mystery growing up in southeast Oklahoma, which is just a hop, skip, and a jump away from southwest Oklahoma. Um, 
Anyway, the story basically goes, and there are multiple iron, store, uh, iron door stories across the U.S., but this one's maybe one of the most well-known, um, and it's somebody back in the day happened to cross an iron door, the sunlight glinting somehow on it, and they go find it, and they realize they can't get into it, so they go back to town to get people to come back and try to get behind that door, because surely there's treasure in there, right? And uh, can never relocate it. And it gets seen throughout the years. There's a sighting here, a sighting there. People can never relocate it. All of this was pre-GPS, obviously. Um, anyway, so there's like this huge lore. And also there's some Frank James and Jesse James type treasure supposedly going on up out here. And there's actually evidence to support that. Fascinating stuff, y'all. Super fascinating. And where we're at right now, north of Treasure Lake and the, treasure, the Spanish Treasure Cave, it is supposedly somewhere in these mountains where that door has been seen. North is a, you know, very broad term, and I suspect we shan't find it, nor are we really looking for it, but it's a really cool bit of folklore. It adds the depth, the richness of the history, the cultural heritage of an area, and it's just absolutely fascinating to me, y'all. Just fascinating, and oh, the mind reels with the wonder of what could be. Okay. We've taken a little side trail into this canyon here. Let's watch our step. I can hear water running. We're heading towards Post Oak Falls, which is a little waterfall that's not gonna have much water running, but I do hear water running a little bit. You can only imagine what that would mean to early explorers and adventurers and Native Americans alike to have a little bit of a water source. Um, and this absolutely brutally hot, even on nice, cool, you know, temperate days um environment these mo people back up in here as well check it out gotta do a little mountain goat action here y'all if we can get closer okay we're not getting any closer than that because this angle again camera never gives the perspective but it's way too sharp of an angle for my knees and my ankles you can't see it again because of perspective but that hole at the bottom of this fall it's at least four or five foot deep if not deeper there are fish in there can you imagine how many eons it took pouring over this solid granite rock face to cut a hole at the bottom of this waterfall five or six feet deep. I mean, it's legit a hole. You can see the drop off, I think. Y'all, this is so, so, so freaking cool. Now I got a billy goat back out of here without breaking my old man legs. We're moving on forward up Post Oak Creek now, guys. Um, Man, look at this trail, y'all. Look at this. This is beautiful. Those colors that you're seeing, like, they're actually a little bit richer to my naked eye. Like, honestly, I haven't enhanced this video at all. I'm going to make sure and leave this section as it is. Those greens and pastels, that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. The reds, the oranges, that's what it freaking looks like, y'all. This is absolutely gorgeous. See if I can find a place to get a picture here. Look at this. If I'm not mistaken, y'all, it's a bit of a, I think that's a juniper tree situation. Like there's ancient juniper trees up on the Buffalo River. They have a similar look. This is a little bit different terrain. Still very arid. And very slow moving because I ain't trying to get broken ankles or snake bit up in this heavy. Oh, look at that. However, where the hell does the road trail at now? Hmm. Y'all, it's definitely a for real, real wilderness hike. No marked trail. And where there is trail, usually it's pretty darn rough. I may have to go back around the other way and see if I can get on top of this bluff. Actually, I think that's what I'm going to have to do. But hey, there's your little waterfall just for, just for funsies. 
I don't know if you can see that. That's a good, probably 200 plus yards distant from me. I'm zoomed in about as far as I can zoom in, I think. That's definitely a little cave up there. If there were any easier access, I would certainly check it out. Look at all these views, though. place is fascinating okay I'm on a little bit of a high spot here again finally it's a little bit smoother y'all there ain't enough boulders out here to uh, I don't know um, build a boulder garden with is that what I believe part of this is called um but yeah y'all this is for real when it says difficult like it means every bit of it like there's no gradient it's all the way difficult hike um, and everyone I've come across about five groups of people now have not really known where they were I mean they know generally GPS uh, navigation they kind of know where they are but no one knows what trail is the right trail and these trails like my trail track looks like a crisp like a tree right now like it just branches off as I go try to figure out can I go that way and find out no I can't um, so it's hell of an exploration but for real real um, not marked <laughs> <laughs> at all wilderness hike which is awesome but also it's it's kind of tough to figure out where you're going sometimes anyway sorry for how bad this audio is right now and the wind but my movo mic has completely failed me once again but we just came from back over there if you can hear this it was <laughs> coming down through that valley right through here man y'all it's a for real real hike y'all it's all of all of everything they say but just look at this view well if you look up here look right here i think i just got my mic back huh but look at this there's an elk up there she's checking me out y'all how cool is that like this place is gorgeous this is absolutely this is just stunningly beautiful man like this is the epitome of rugged and wilderness there's elk running around in here there's buffalo bison like god i need more time here this is vast man there's so much you could get into in here okay it feels like we've like <laughs> crossed the dividing point to where we're on the downslope to uh sunset pool Man, it's getting kind of late in the day. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. I got to go back or <laughs> throw a hammock up at Sunset Pool, one of the two. Um, anyway, y'all, it's for real rugged. This is the epitome of rugged and wilderness and all those kinds of terminologies. It is absolutely a difficult hike in very many places. Um, there's some sketchy stuff, y'all. Don't bring your kids out here in flip-flops. Like, it ain't that kind of hike. Like, it just ain't. Um, but anyway, this is gorgeous man and we'll probably catch a few more glimpse, glimpses of things I'll try to catch this end of the trail a little bit and maybe some at sunset pool holy shit look at that kind of feels like being in Arizona or Colorado or New Mexico or somewhere like that y'all it really does y'all the views on this hike this video can't even begin to do it justice like the naked eye is so much more high def than high def it just is um dry creek we're on the other side headed towards sunset pool we're on the downslope for sure it's almost turning into like a river bottom feel we're in the the foothills now kind of leading up on the north side of where we're at to the mountains but it's almost got a <laughs> river bottom feel but there's not really a river. There's a little creek that I just can't see flooding enough and often enough. But this is the brambles of a good old-fashioned river bottom down in here. It's a whole new kind of hike. A much easier kind of hike. But we're going to go ahead and finish this up, get into Sunset Pool, and then we're going to have to decide what we're going to do tonight. All right, so we've made it to Sunset Pool. Got about one... Two and a half, 245 to the horizon, or 145 to the horizon, just about two hours till dark. Um, so I have a decision to make. Um, pull out my hammock and set it up here. I don't even know if this campground's open to camping right now, but literally I have two cho choices. 
throw my hammock out here, stay the night, or really push it and pound ground, and I mean pound ground, back to where I came from, as dark as setting. And down in those valleys, it will get dark a lot earlier um, than it will out here in, like, say, an open area or in a plain area. That is incredibly risky, especially with me having my weak knees and ankles, as I've talked to you guys about before. So probably the decision I'm about to make is the executive decision of not <laughs> optimal, but throw my hammock out and stay the night, find a pay box and throw a few dollar bills in it. Surely, even if it's closed, I don't think that Park Service would fault me if I described to them that, hey, I was really going to be pushing it going back to a damn boulder garden and everything else with dark setting. That's not safe. They don't like coming to find people. You guys know I'm search and rescue. We don't like going to find people in the middle of the night that are like broken to pieces and dying. It's like not good for anyone. So I'm afraid, I'm gonna think about it for a minute more, but I'm afraid I'm gonna end up throwing up a hammock here and just stay in the night and pounding out at first light or maybe even a little earlier. This first 45 minutes of this hike going this way is actually fairly level with a good flashlight should be totally totally fine to get a jump start so i can get back home by tomorrow afternoon probably ought to stay here and maybe that sunset will cooperate maybe we could get a nice sunset pick at sunset pool anyway if we end the video right here you guys thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it check out the podcast wayward stories podcast anywhere you find podcasts we're like kicking along over there fine and dandy until the next video you guys be good to each other